everybody, this is Garrett with Earth and Time and today I'm checking out a place just between Reno, Nevada and Carson City, Nevada known as Slide Mountain that you can see behind me where all the snow pack is. And I want to come visit this spot because natural disasters are an important part of what geoscientists try to help describe and try to help predict to the best of their ability to try to help people out. And this is a nice example of a large landslide behind me that I want to show you what a landslide deposit looks like, talk a little bit about the history here associated with Slide Mountain, and then thinking forward, knowing that we've had record rainfall and or at least close to record rainfall and snowfall in California and this northern parts of Nevada, the idea that you know things like this landslide could get triggered here. So it's good to try to educate people on that as well. So please join me to learn a little bit more about Slide Mountain here in northern Nevada. First thing I want to do is get our bearings on where we're at. So Slide Mountain is between Reno, Nevada to the north uh, about 15 minutes and south of Slide Mountain about 15-20 minutes is Carson City, Nevada. So it sits in a little area known as Washoe Valley between those two areas. Now Slide Mountain is composed of the Sierra Nevada batholith. So these are a series of granites that set this up and the slide itself is a series of slides somewhere between 10 and 12 slides as I understand it with the latest being 1983. So we're going to go take a look and drive over what's known as the toe of the landslide and we'll talk a little bit more about the landslides and I'll show some diagrams on my whiteboard as well. Here's a quick pan just south of Slide Mountain just showing what the mountain and the topography looks like. Slide Mountain actually is this mountain right here and what you can see is there's a kind of a fresh face. You can see the snow and you can see the light gray underneath it. That's the fresh face from where the slide actually came down. But I wanted to give you an image of it from this point of view. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drive down this road, which is alternate 395 business, I believe. And we're gonna drive over the, what we call the toe of the landslide. Now, one thing I wanna point out is some of this topography we see here, and we can call this hummocky topography. So you can see how this topography kind of comes up and down, up and down. A lot of this is most likely composed of landslides as well that have come down off the Sierra Nevada mountains there um, on very wet years or maybe earthquakes have triggered them as well. There is a large fault zone that runs through this area also and we've seen that in one of my other videos that I'll link to up here known as the Genoa fault zone which is about 30-40 minutes south of where I'm at right now. So as we look at Slide Mountain again, we can see this hummocky topography. And what I'm going to do, I'll drive down and we're going to drive over the toe, or the, what we call the toe, the end of the landslide. So let's learn a little bit more about landslide morphology on my whiteboard. And to the whiteboard. So here's a quick cross-sectional sketch of what a landslide would look like. So we have our mountain here traced in black. And you can imagine the original mountain actually came out here and then came down some like something like that but what happens is there's a failure due to gravity and a whole chunk of the mountain slides down as a landslide and the landslide can be described in different parts so the main parts for today's discussion for what we're looking at today is the scarp which is where the original the material originally was attached to so that'd be the top of the mountain so all this material you can imagine sliding it back up like a puzzle piece and reattaching it up here but because we know it all slid down, it's here now. And this is called the scarp, the place where this landslide material originated at. And if we follow down, a lot of times it's hummocky and it's bumpy through here. And eventually we get to the toe or the end of the landslide. And we're actually gonna go take a look at the toe today here at Slide Mountain as well. And we'll have a good view of the scarp as we're driving around. And I'll point both of those out to you. This is the general terminology and morphology of a landslide. I was heading north along the road, this business 395, and I wanted to stop here, getting a little closer to Slide Mountain that you can see here in the background. But what I wanted to show is another look at some of the topography here. And a lot of this topography is most likely related to landslide as well. And actually, unfortunately, you can see there's some fire damage where there's old, you know, the pine trees have been burned up there as well. But I also wanted to show from Slide Mountain, although we have a hill in front of us that itself it's probably part of an old landslide. The toe that we're gonna go drive across and look at is located right in this area. And that's the toe to this slide mountain landslide. And I believe the 1983 slide comes all the way down into this area, but there's others who have expertise in this section. Please feel free to comment down below. 
So although I'm here to talk about geology, I wanted to stop and show you these cranes. I think these are maybe sand cranes. Uh, they're out here in the field as I'm driving towards Slide Mountain, which is just off to my left, but it's not very often I get to see cranes. Um, and this is probably the closest I've ever seen cranes that aren't in a zoo. So this is really cool and I wanted to share it with all of you as well. You can see they're rooting in this area. From a geology point of view, you can see the other mountain range on the other side that sets up this valley. So I'm still heading north along this 395 business route and I wanted to stop and I'm right by an area known as Bowers Mansion, which is an old 1800s mansion where the Bowers family made their fortune, the Comstock load and built uh, a beautiful home here that you can do tours on the weekends. But what I wanted to show is this profile starting at the end here where we can actually see the toe of the landslide coming out and you'll see the slope. There's a grove of pine trees just behind it. And you'll see they they turn into some kind of, I think, cottonwoods down here. That's the end of the slope for this run out for the landslide. And we can look to the left and follow this up. We can see where the road cuts at. We're gonna go over there and take a look. And then we're gonna work our way um, looking up this direction. So this whole ridge you see behind us, even behind this Bower Mansions County Park sign, that ridge is all part of a massive landslide. And you can see with the trees for scale and the cars, how large this landslide really is. This was a catastrophic landslide. It's not just one, but there's been a series of these catastrophic landslides that have come down here into the Washoe Valley. Since I'm standing here by Bowers Mansion, I also wanted to show what this looks like. So this is this 1800s mansion that belonged to the Bowers family here. And again, they do tours through this old 1800s mansion if you're ever in this area. I actually have never done the tour, but maybe worth checking out sometime. So now I've moved farther north and I'm getting really close to that toe we looked at at the last spot. So you can see the toe of the slope here. So this is the end of that landslide. They have the road cut through it and then it continues off down to the right. And we saw that from the last stop from a distance. But I want to get up close to this area and show you Slide Mountain behind me where you can see what they call the scarp. And so the scarp is the part where all the rock detached from just like in the drawing I drew for you all earlier so you can start seeing where that slope or that scarp is at up on the slope up there that's actually covered in snow so again they've had a lot of snow this year here in northern Nevada the other thing I want to show you is if you look at the hillside behind me here you're going to see there's all kinds of different size material so what happens during a landslide well a lot of the material comes down and it gets jumbled up so you're going to have sand sized particles you're going to have big boulders you're going to have gravels you're going to have rocks of different sizes coming down now this material is all basically made up of granite and here's some down here and you can see some of this granitic sand down here as well as some of these chunks that probably came down from this landslide so I'm just on the edge of that and you'll see this piece of quartz here that you can see nice pieces of biotite in there and you can see some um, horn blend in there and you can see a lot of quartz and looks like some potentially plagioclase I don't actually don't have my hand lens on me not being a very good geoscientist right now but this is the type of material that is making up this whole slope here including kind of the sandy material that comes down that's getting ground along the way so let's move up onto the toe up here and take a look going up where this landslide came from and talk a little bit more about the 1983 landslide. I've moved up onto the toe of the landslide now. Now I'm along a busy road so I'm going to apologize about some of the sound and you're going to hear some other noise back there and that is the river that's cutting down through this area. So there is a river that comes down here. There's actually a nice little park up here. I believe it's called Davis uh, Park or Davis Regional Park. You can come up here camp. You can do a bunch of hiking. But what I wanted to show you is we're on the toe of this landslide now. And you can see all the large boulders that are sitting behind me. You can see Slide Mountain behind and where all that material originated from and came down this way. In 1983, when it came down, it actually, there used to be two lakes up there and actually, um, totally wiped out one of those lakes. There's actually a very deep canyon now associated with that where you can see the material came through, flushed down through that area and moved all the way out here. And this river that we can see behind me here continue to cut down through and work its way through these landslide deposits, even from these ones in 1983. 
and work its way down into the valley into Washoe Lake, which you can see off in the distance there that sits down at the floor of this valley. Close to this material that makes up the slopes here, you're gonna see the granite again and you're gonna see what we would call poorly sorted. So there are all kinds of different size pebbles and gravels and sand here and, and ugh, getting much larger gravels and boulders. And again, that's what happens when one of these big landslides happen. It's just an amalgamation of a lot of different material or different size material all coming down and being ground up and crushed and moved out because of gravity, because of that failure up there on the slope. And you can actually still see the scarp area where this all came from. So I moved a little farther north uh, along the road again, and now I'm coming to the other side of this toe. In fact, if I turn around and hold the camera up, you can probably see the slope going down and the final run out of some of the landslides. Now, the areas where the, the 1983 landslide obviously didn't affect are these areas with the large trees, right? These pine trees are older than 30 years old, I would guess. In fact, some of these pine trees, like the one behind me, has been standing here, it looks like, for quite a while. Is it important for us to understand things like landslides and come study places like this? Well, in years like this year, 2023, we've had a lot of snowpack, a lot of moisture, and there's a potential for even more rain. I, as I understand, we may be going into an El Nino year. And with that, that means we have more risk of these landslides occurring. As the water from the snow melt starts coming down, it starts loosening up the rocks up dip of us right and then everything's based on gravity so granite is naturally fractured and it has a series of fractures in it and it has zones of weakness associated with it so the water through freeze thaw action so in the winter time or when it gets cold it freezes it can start fracturing or cracking that rock through time and if you add water as it starts to melt it can lubricate those cracks and because of gravity eventually this whole landslide is going to come down much like the diagram i drew you earlier on the little whiteboard so it's important for us to understand these and come study these types of environments and try to understand historic landslides so we can get an idea how they can affect people today. In this case, there's been a number of studies done studying the various different landslides and trying to figure out how far out do they actually come from the mountain to give us an idea, a buffer zone, if you will, to try to think about how to help protect communities and try to help protect people and infrastructure. So as geoscientists, this is one of the things that we do and it's really important for us to come study places like this. Slide Mountain is a beautiful example of one of these large landslide events, especially the 1983 one. So with that being said, I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope you all learned something. I hope you're as fascinated as I am about the natural world around you and starting to make observations as you go out and you travel. Thank you again for joining me. If you enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel. I look forward to taking you on the next geologic or historic adventure with me. Take care.